Hey everybody, so this is the full length build of the pulse oximeter that I have been working on. Just as a reminder, this is just a concept. This is not anything that I'm actually working on for OXO or Target. Um, it is just a concept idea that I've just been toying around with, um, more just to practice branding and whatnot. Anyways, so uh, this is just the basic shape. Just as a reminder, we're not doing a full build. build. We're not doing any rendering or anything of that sort. Um, also, this is more of a longer, just down and dirty modeling. I mean, I'm not going to be doing really any editing or anything. <clears throat> Sorry. So um, keep that in mind. I'm going to probably drink some water during it because I can only talk for so long before my voice gives out. And let's just jump on over. So I'm going to close that down. And let's just start with SolidWorks. As I mentioned in the comparison video, I already had the sketches in place because I want to really showcase surfacing and how the just the, the usability and the, the interface itself more than anything. So um, I have the first three views, the front, side, and top views already sketched out. And something I've also done is I've also isolated individual lines that I know I'm going to be needing in the future. Typically, I'd be doing these isolations later, but again, I'm just trying to speed through this process and to showcase specifically the surfacing. So I have the top, side, and front. And then you can see all of these different individual parts that I've also pulled out. And it may, it may should be good. All right, so we're going to start off with just an extruding surface. We're going to click on the circle right here. And we're just going to go right to that point. Might even have some things going on on an intercom. I'm actually at work right now. Um, fun fact, I actually work at a hospital. And I do all of my 3D modeling at a hospital. Um, all right, so that looks good. We got that basic shape right there. And I'm actually going to make this disappear at this point. I don't need that reference for anything else. And I've actually been really impressed with how simple um, surfacing really is. I mean, it is different. It is definitely a different beast than just typical modeling um, but it is not that bad once you get the hang of it um, something that's unique for how I have set up I have this feature set here I, I added it it's not a default setting for it in surfacing I use it frequently and so I like having this delete keep body feature personally that's just a, a little preference that I have so I'm actually going to make these standard top and side views disappear as well just so I don't get them confused so and I actually click on the wrong one you can see some of those lines are still saying because again those are what we're working with awesome so those are all the actual lines that we're going to be needing as um, constraints or guide, guide rails so we're going to use the fill surface and click on these outside and it's kind of interesting, sometimes when you're filling surfaces, it just works with continuing to click on all of the lines for these patch boundaries, as you can see right here. And sometimes not, sometimes you need to have constraint curves. I'm not quite sure why there's the difference sometimes, and sometimes there isn't, but there is. So uh, we'll do that, and we'll see if this side one will work the same way. Yeah, so if you see right there, if we hit the boundary patches, it's not working the same way. I'm not quite sure why it does that. So we're just actually going to delete these two, and we should be able to put them in a constraint curve, and that should, there we go, fill in. So if it doesn't work one way, definitely try it the other. So we have that basic shape already, um, definitely coming together. And we're actually going to extrude, cut these one at a time. It won't really like us doing it um, two at a time. Click OK. And we're just going to do the same sort of thing. We're just going to trim that out and delete this body. And you can see, boom, got this little cutout. And we're actually just going to, um, let's try mirroring it. I'm not sure if the feature will go across, but um, since there is multiple steps, but we can give it a go. So we'll click on that one. 
Yeah, it won't, won't really like me doing it. Come on. Yeah, with multiple features in this case, won't work. That's all right. We'll just do the same thing. We're going to extrude. Create mid plane. And we're going to trim and delete. And again, there, there's lots of different ways that I could go about making this, um, all sorts of different ways. So you can see we're actually missing the curves that we're going to need. So we're actually going to bring back that sketch right there. And I'm actually going to do a new sketch. So yeah, there's a lot of different ways that I could tackle this project. I, I'll admit I have modeled this multiple times to kind of prep and set up this, um, this demonstration. And so there's really all sorts of things I could have done differently. Um, but this is just for what I'm showcasing. I feel has been the best, one of the better options. All right. So we have that line there now. We'll do a fill surface again. Awesome. And then last, we're just going to actually mirror that, that right over. I know that will work. So we will mirror. We're just gonna use the front face, front plane. I'm actually gonna do a body. Since all of these are separate surfaces, um, it's just gonna recognize that as a separate body at this point since none of it is stitched together. All right, that's it. We've got the shape. Last but not least, we'll just turn off all the sketches so we don't have to see them. You can see the blue lines saying that they're all separate different surfaces. Go to surface, we're gonna knit surface, highlight it all. And we're going to merge entities as well as create solid, make it one solid part. And you can see those blue lines disappear. They turn to black. And if we do a cross-section view, you can see it's an actual solid part. So, yep. So that's it for SolidWorks. Um, Fusion 360, we're just going to go over. Same sort of thing. There are some other like minor differences in the sketches that I've I've set up, and I don't know if I have as many... Um, preset sketches I don't so I just have just the original three sketches so we're actually going to go through and recreate all of the other sketches while we as we go so we're going to extrude same sort of thing go two sides up to object up to object just run it quick to there okay come on There we go. Awesome. We don't need that sketch anymore. We'll get that out of the way. And so right now, we're just going to pretty much do the exact same process. So again, you can see right now it's selecting more lines than we want. So we're actually, we're gonna have to create some new sketches and then just kind of copy it from there. And so great thing about having the original sketches already there and while we're at it we might as well create all these other Oop, didn't want to do that don't want to be in that sketch oh bother wrong one okay we're just gonna yeah we're just gonna create all these sketches while we're while we're working. So these ones should be fine doing two at once since they'll be separate. If not, we'll have to go back and we'll just make some more again, which is not a problem. So this, I got you, that art right there, you can actually see I, I misplaced, so it's good that we're doing this anyways. Um, yeah. Okay, so we have that now new arc. So let's delete that so we can see clearer. We'll get rid of that. Awesome, so you can see we have all those different lines that we'll need and we'll still need to add that other arc right there at some point. So we're extrude this guy. We're gonna go up, just do symmetric. We'll call it good. 
So then we have just the trim, real sim similar to, to SolidWorks, our trim tool, and then we can select what we're going to trim after that. So that's something that's a little bit different with SolidWorks. You can see that it has both Fusion 360 just has the one. And I'm actually just going to click on it and click delete. Okay. Missing the sketch. Oh, I missed putting an arc in. All right, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring back that sketch. It's not what I said. I said, there we go. All right. And we'll try doing both of them at the same time. Okay, so we'll make that sketch disappear again. And we're going to use a patch. Um, we'll try using that first. Actually, no, we should have a, yeah, we'll do a patch. Oh, wrong one, patch, click on that. Don't need that, that's wrong. Oh, goodness. Sorry, guys. Patch. Again, this is just kind of a rails. And there we go, we got that. So, what we do want to do is we want to bring those sketches back. We need those so we can do the same thing. Do another patch, select the rails, awesome. One thing that's kind of weird about surfaces for Fusion 360, which I think is not a bad thing, it's just different. They have like a inside and outside color. You can see they're different colors. I don't really know why they do that, but they do. Okay, we can get rid of a couple of those sketches now. And here, we can actually do both at the same time. I don't know why it's not that way in SOLIDWORKS, but they didn't have that. Trim tool. We'll do the same thing over here. And then we're actually just going to click on these guys and click delete. And you can see we're going to see straight through. Awesome. Last, time, last thing we want to do is add those arcs. We're going to do another sketch. We'll just add it on one side like we did last time. Same sort of dealio. Just use a patch. Give it a rail. Awesome. Okay, let's just hide all the sketches. We don't need them at this point. And then we're just going to go to solid. Mirror. And we can do a face, but we actually want to do a, I guess we can do a face, face should work. So click on that. And then for our mirror plane. Awesome have all of those and we're going to go back to surfacing and we're going to knit it all together. Same sort of thing, we're just going to highlight everything, create a new body, click OK, and there you have it. It is, well, it should be a solid. Let's just inspect it real quick. Yep, solid body. So there you go. We've finished creating that body. And that is it. That is really a quick run through of how to surface in Fusion 360 as well as in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, I did, again, I talked about these different differences and pros and cons for both of them in the other video, but just if, for those who are curious about the actual full build, um, that's it right there, or at least this section of the full build. If you liked it, leave a comment down below. I noticed that wasn't the cleanest model. I definitely was making mistakes here and there. That's typically how I always am modeling. I'm doing stupid things. And so I just wanted to give you guys a little bit more of a raw video. So thanks for watching, and I will see you guys later.